as I told some people earlier this week, uh, I was going to do a video, quick video on how to use um, Math Audio Room EQ to equalize your speakers. And I have a situation where um, I have two different sets of speakers. I just got these little Yamaha 5 inches, which are great reference speakers, but they need to be flattened out just like every other set of speakers and uh, including those GVLs there. So everything needs to be flat. So what I'm going to do is the first thing I'm going to do, I, I've got a calibration microphone right here and it is set right at mix position. So if you haven't seen the video on how to set up a room for getting translating mixes working, you need to do that. Um, that's in my, that's in my uh, list of videos. Anyway, okay, so here's what we're going to do. We've got a calibration mic, and it's right at exactly where my ear position is going to be, okay? And I have a 30-degree angle from that speaker and a 30-degree angle from that speaker coming right to my mix position right here. And so these are at where exactly my ear height is when I'm in mixing, okay? Now, you're going to have to get either, well, you have to get audio hijack. Okay, that's an application from Rogue Amoeba, R-O-G-U-E-M-O-E-B-A, um, Rogue Amoeba, because you have to be able to intercept the audio, run it through the Math Audio Room EQ plugin, and then to your interface, whichever that is. And so you've got to get audio hijack for that. And I'm showing you an audio hijack session right here. And so the input is going to, I'm going to select the input for calibrating these uh, Yamahas. I'm going to set the input to my calibration mic, which is the UMIK-1. And it's a USB microphone, so it's really easy to set up just using your USB. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Math Audio Room EQ set that up and here it is and it's actually taken a curve but I'm going to go back uh, and do it again so room measurement okay you can see my mic is is working I have to make sure that the speakers are, are going to output sound um, because if they don't output sound this isn't going to work and so they're gonna the speakers are getting output directly from my XUSB device okay so I'm going to go ahead and start measurement. I'm going to walk out of the way, and you're going to hear what this thing does. Okay, so that took my curve, and it wants me to do one more measurement. I'm not going to do that. So there's my curve. And then what I'm going to do is this line right here shows where I can set the line to make everything flat. Now I have to go a little bit lower because the right speaker has a little bit different characteristics. I want to go until the whole thing is just entirely flat so I get a very flat response. Okay, So that's perfect response now. This is going to adjust these speakers so that the output is flat as can possibly be. Okay, So now I'm going to save my preset and I'm going to just save it as Yamaha. Okay. And that's it. So I've calibrated my room with Math Audio Room EQ. I've calibrated those upper Yamaha speakers and I can do the same thing with the JBLs. And I, I do switch between the EQ curves when I go from the Yamahas to the JBLs. And so you'll see how that how that works but definitely you okay one other thing in order to intercept the audio you need another thing and that is called uh, either loop back or you can use soundflower and I have them both soundflower is a little bit better when you're mixing because it, it allows you to have uh, uh, 2048 buffers and loopback only allows you to have 512 buffers. And so if you're using a lot of plugins, you really are going to need that. So anyway, so here's what we do. Audio hijack. We need sound flower so that it can intercept the audio so that Mac will 
send the audio to Soundflower instead of to the speakers or to your interface. Soundflower will then be used as your input channel. Then it'll go to Mouth Audio Room EQ. And then your output device will be your interface that's driving your speakers. And then you can have view. You can do whatever you want with plugins here, but I just have some VU meters on there to make sure everything is, is good and I'm not clipping. And that's it. So then run your EQ. Now I'm gonna run back. I'm gonna tell it, uh, I'm gonna tell Math Audio I don't wanna be in room measurement mode anymore. I wanna be in room EQ mode. And now everything that I play coming out of those Yamaha speakers is gonna be flat as a pancake. And it's gonna be a reproducible reference. And my mixes will absolutely translate because I've done that right there. I've taken out all that error and um, you know, that's what you need to do. So you need a, a calibration mic. It's about $100. I'm using the UMK-1. See that guy right there? Uh, from Mini DSP. UMK-1 calibration mic. Whatever speakers you're going to use. And then Math Audio Room EQ. And Audio Hijack. Uh, and Soundflower, or uh, also from Rogue Amoeba is uh, Loopback, and uh, I again, whatever you prefer, uh, they both work. Um, it's just that Loopback has fewer buffers, and you can get some clipping and clicks and pops and stuff. And um, you know that's really not good. You don't want that when you're mixing down. Okay, last thing, and it is very important: in your DAW, when you're mixing, you have to choose either Soundflower or Loopback as your output so that that then would go into um, your input device, in my case, which is um, Soundflower, which, which is then going to go through Math Audio Room EQ and then to the I.O. output. So it is very important that you select Soundflower, if that's what you've installed, or or loop back if that's what you've installed as the output from your DAW so that it'll be routed through the Math Audio Room EQ plugin. Okay? Now, another way you could do it is put a plugin on your Master Fader bus, but the problem with that is going to be that will actually mix the EQ into your into your output. And you do not want that. And then you'd have to remember, "Oh, when I do when I print this or you know make a make a mix down, I've got to deactivate that. When I'm listening and mixing, I've got to turn it on, and then I've when I'm printing, I've got to turn it off. Uh, so to avoid that, just select this as your output in your DAW, but it will still print uh, correctly because the EQ is going to come after. Okay. So that's not what's going to get mixed into your file. You're not going to mix that that EQ curve into your file. You don't want to do that. You want to hear it accurately, but you don't want to mix it in. And so, anyway, make sure in your DAW your output is set to Soundflower or Audio Hijack, and that should get you going. Okay? If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll get to you next time. Thanks.